Good morning, church. It's Thursday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go back to the book of Judges. <clears throat> We're going to pick it up in chapter number 13 and following as we talk about, again, the life of Samson. The reason we're taking so much time with Samson is because there's a great deal of lessons to be learned from Samson, strongest man physically that we know of in the Bible. He has this great strength, but he doesn't have the inner strength to overcome temptation, and we see he has some weaknesses. Now, chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16 are all about Samson, and so it's a longer story than we usually get in the scriptures concerning a man's life. But he is a significant uh, example to us of what sin will do in your life. Now, we've already talked about his sin. <clears throat> Let's talk about that sin will always take you further than you ever intended to go. When you're a child of God, and even if you're not a child of God, when you began down the pathway of sin, one sin oftentimes leads to another sin, to another sin, and eventually your heart becomes hardened to where even the sin that you're involved in no longer bothers you like it used to. And you'll find yourself down a path that oftentimes you never intended to get involved with sin that deeply. Now, <clears throat> maybe it is alcohol or drugs, or maybe it's gambling, those kind of vices, but oftentimes it's the sin of sexual nature. And that's what it is in Samson's life. Almost every one of the listings in the New Testament of sin begins with sexual immorality. It just seems to be one of those that captivate particularly men, but it also catches up women. And it will, it will continue down a path that will lead you to a, a place you never thought you would ever go to, farther and farther down the path. Now let me give you the example of, of uh, Samson. In chapter number 13, we see that Samson is born. God anoints him and uses him in mighty ways. But then in chapter number 14, he takes a wife, and it's not a woman that God is pleased with. Not even his family is pleased with. But he decides, I'm going to marry an unbeliever. Well, that shows, again, his character in choosing a mate for life, that it's a poor choice. But at least it was kind of legitimate. It was going to have a marriage vows and, and a, a wedding and all those things, but that all fell apart. But then next, he goes into a prostitute, a one-night stand. He pays to have sexual relationship with a woman. That ends up with more conflict with uh, the Philistines, as we, you can read through that yourself. Eventually, not only is he now sexually immoral, he moves in with the woman. So you see how it progresses from a relationship but at least it's a marriage relationship, even though not blessed of God, to a relationship that's just a one-night stand. And now he's living with an individual. And so we can read the story of Samson Delilah in chapter number 16, and you can read that for yourself. As you go through there, you're going to find, again, that he is able to be seduced by her, the strengths we thought he had now show themselves to be weaknesses. He eventually loses even his physical strength. He's gone down that road to where sin is destroying his life. We need to realize that when we start down that path, if we don't immediately repent and stop the nonsense, whether it be alcohol or drugs or whether it be again, gambling or some addiction there, uh, pornography, whatever it is, it will lead you farther and farther down the road to where it will literally captivate your life and bring you into bondage. And we see that in David's life. David, the king of Israel. Remember, and we'll get to him, we'll probably bring this up again, that when David started down the path, it was sexual immorality. But it then it was lying and deceit and all these things to cover up his transgression rather than repent and make it right before God and whoever he needed to, to make it right with. <clears throat> he took another step, trying to cover it up and lie and deceit. Eventually, it led to murder. Now, David would have never thought, never in a million years would David have thought that he could allow sin to take him that far 
that he would take a friend's life so he could have his wife. That just boggles the mind. David is a man after God's own heart. None of us would have foreseen that, but that is the nature of sin. And so in this devotion, we need to realize that sin is not to be trifled with. Sin will always take us farther down the line than we intended to go. We need to repent now of sin. So if you've got something going on in your life, you know it ought not be there. You repent now before it gets a hold of your life. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. Let's pray together. Father, I may be talking with some folks that are already way down the line in sin. They're your children. And yet, Father, they've allowed sin to take them so far down the line that it seems like that they're doing things they never would have thought they would ever do. I pray, Father, to release them from that. Father, set them free. Jesus came to set us free from our sins. And if the Son sets us free, we're free indeed, so set them free. And we're just going to give you the praise for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.